Okay. Um, hi everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. My name is Rachel and I am the Student Recruitment Manager at Monash Parkville and we're here today to talk to you about moving to Melbourne. I will get my panellists to introduce themselves shortly but firstly I wanted to give you guys a short introduction to Melbourne. Um, so it's no secret that Melbourne is a world-class destination um, for people to study, work, live and play. Um, for the last few years, it's um, been consistently ranked in the world's top two of most livable cities, which basically means that it scores highly in areas such as stability, environment and culture, infrastructure and healthcare. Um, I'm born and raised in Melbourne, so Melbourne is home for me. Um, but many other people choose to make Melbourne their home. So we've ended up with this amazing, diverse, multicultural society where often English isn't um, necessarily the first language spoken at home. Um, so I'll get my panel to introduce themselves now, um, maybe starting with you, Seaman, um, just your name, um, what course you're studying and where you're from. Yep. Um, hi, my name is uh, Siman. I'm actually a third year pharmacy student um, from Malaysia. So I actually am born from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So I just came here this year to Melbourne. Awesome. Megan? Hey guys, my name is Megan and I'm a second year pharmaceutical science student. Um, I'm an international student from Indonesia. And Jen? Hi, my name is Jennifer Kalista, and I am currently a second year student in pharmaceutical science, and this will be my second year living in Melbourne as well. And I was born in Indonesia and grew up in Singapore, and now here I am in Melbourne. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so first of all, I just want you to all briefly let me know sort of what um, brought you to Melbourne, like why you chose to study your course. Um, at Monash Parkville. Um, so maybe Jen, we'll go back to you. Right, so firstly, I chose uh, Monash Pharmaceutical Science because, well, it's based in Australia and it's the furthest country I can go. And to be honest, it's also because it's uh, number two rank in the world after Harvard. So it was, yeah. Pretty it's compelling, why, right? <laughs> yeah. And also um, when I was looking through and comparing the universities. Um, I like how the course is specific and they let us choose the majors at the end of the year for pharmaceutical science. Excellent, thanks. Megan? Yeah, my answer is pretty similar to Jen because <laughs> as an only child too, and, um, and as an only child, my parents let me, the furthest I could go is Australia. So I chose Australia too and because uh, um, Monash is also the second role. It's very impressive. So, and I had, I've always had this passion in like chemistry, in skincare formulation, and all those, you know, in the cosmetic world. I think, you know, every girl's dream is to have their, you know, <laughs> oh, I want to have my own cosmetic line and stuff. So that was me. So, and yeah, pharmaceutical science just, you know, I would say offered me a future in that world. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and as for me, I think the same as everyone, um, the furthest I could go is also Australia. <laughs> and um, so look at Australia, and since I've always been interested in biology and chemistry, so I end up choosing, choosing my uh, course in pharmacy. And since that, there's a training program and there's actually a campus base in Malaysia, so I'm able to do a transfer program as well. So that was good for me. And due to the ranking as well, um, if not me take them top three uh, pharmacy, the ranking in the entire world. So that was good. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Okay, let's talk about Melbourne now. What do you guys like about Melbourne? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, should I go first? All right, um, yeah. so I, I feel like Melbourne, because I live in the city, um, everything is very convenient. So basically anywhere I go, left, right, up, down, um, there's always the gro groceries nearby. And then the tram is just right in front of my student accommodation. So that was great. 
And um, uh, as an international student, you always crave for um, Asian food, your own, like Malaysian food, for me, example. So like in a city, there's a lot of uh, restaurants like that. And there's even Chinatown and a lot of Asian grocers if you want to make your own food. So that was something great for Melbourne, uh, for me, as well as like the nature. There's a lot of parks as well. So you can go and like, you know, you see, chill. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can go next. So similar to Seaman, I'm also living in the city. So everything's very convenient, very accessible. There's like a convenience store down, um, like next to my apartment. So it's really convenient. Um, and there's also a park near my apartment, but I rarely use that. So because you know, <laughs> I'm just an indoor person, that's good. But yeah, that's good. Um, what else? Um, I also really love the diversity. And yeah, like when, when I miss home, feeling a bit homesick, I can just buy the ingredients from the Asian grocery stores, make my own, you know, homemade Indonesian meal or go to an Indonesian restaurant and just, you know, take away some meals. So yeah, I, when I get homesick, I don't really feel homesick, if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. And Jen? I'll go next. Um, so the reason why I like Melbourne, I think uh, Rachel mentioned it in the first place. Um, I like how the city is vibrant and very diverse and also like many international students come to Melbourne to study, right? So it actually uh, gives me the opportunity to meet people from different background and, you know, just learn, just pick up little knowledge from these people and like their uh, country and culture as well, which awesome. allows me to broad, uh, widen my perspective, I guess. Mm. Yeah, broaden your horizons. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Um, yeah, that was great. Thanks. Um, what would you say um, people in Melbourne are like? Mm, they, they are very nice, I feel. Um, they're also very like courteous as well so like even if you do not know the directions or like maybe you took the wrong tram or something they will guide you to the right path which i'm so grateful for yeah. <laughs> and um like for example like if you can't find the ingredients that you need or so so when you go to the asian grocers they are actually the shopkeepers themselves they are also international so sometimes you find uh, people who can speak the same language as you and that's very comforting i feel like mm -hmm. Hi. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. So when you go, like, for example, I go to Queen Victoria Market, there are ladies speaking Cantonese and Mandarin, you know, so, like, it's, it's, it's very nice to, like, you know, and they ask me where I'm from, and I'm like, oh, same, you know, that kind of thing. So that was, like, really nice for me. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and what fun things um, have you been able to do in Melbourne so far or even in Australia? Like, has anyone travelled around? Um, what attractions have you seen? Um, yeah, what sort of recreational activities have you done? Megan? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> so I've been to Sydney once. Um, fun fact, before I came to Melbourne, I only went here once yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's my second time going to Melbourne when I moved here. But yeah, the first time I went to Melbourne, I right away just felt a click like, yeah, I think this is what I want from a city. This is some a city that I can call my second home and stuff. And yeah, so I've been to St. Kilda Beach. Um, unfortunately, oh, I actually saw some penguins. Yeah, I saw some penguins. <laughs> like, yeah, that was really cool. Like be behind the rocks and stuff. They're really cute. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, I haven't seen any koalas and kangaroos. That's in my bucket list. <laughs> Next year, I'm going to see them. <laughs> um, what else? Well, in the CBD, I think there's lots of historical landmarks, like Flinders Street, Flinders Street Station. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Flinders Street Station, Federation <laughs> Square. And yeah, it's definitely there are some landmarks that I have yet visited. Mm -hmm. that I will <laughs> yeah. And yeah. yeah there's always more to say I think mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah what about you Seema 
Um, I've actually been, um, like the past three years, I've been coming to Sydney a lot because my brother's here. So mm-hmm. I've actually went to like the Blue Mountains, um, like for hiking, uh, the Grand Canyon Walk. Um, uh-huh. A lot of like nature related. And I visited like um, a few zoos, like Tang- Taronga. Taronga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Taronga Zoo, yeah. yeah. The biggest zoo in Australia, is it? I'm not mistaken. So yeah, like, I think right. everything there, like um, you will see like, Koala bears, like um, like um, kangaroos as well, and also like the sea creatures, like the huge ones, like penguins and like um, I don't know. There's like a lot of stuff. So like, if you have a chance, <laughs> going to the zoos and yeah. like the nature walks, you know, um, any hiking trails, yeah, um, that would be great. I, I would yes, say. yeah, we have some pretty unusual animals here. I think, mm-hmm. yeah, and not as many spiders as people think. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't encountered it in my room, like when I stay. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's not too many deadly spiders in Melbourne, I don't think, which is good. All right. Let's move on. Um, let's talk about accommodation. So obviously, you know, international education is an investment. Um, and, you know, you guys have all, all had not to only invest in your studies, but in um, accommodation and a lifestyle as well. So do you want to talk a little bit about your living situation and um, how it works for you, um, Jen? So um, last year, during my first year, I actually, I was still under 18, right? So I actually lived uh, with my aunt. So I have a family here. But this year, I decided to move out. And because mm-hmm. I'm still living, I'm living in a student accommodation now, so mm-hmm. um, because I live in the suburb, it's I'm I'm pretty sure it's cheaper than uh like living in the city. In the city, yeah. yeah. Cool. And Megan, what about you? So um I've been living alone all this time without any roommates from last year. And I moved out and then I have my own room again this year. Um the reason behind that because is because my parents, they often visit me. So mm-hmm. every time they visit me here, they're gonna stay at my place. So, you know, we have our own private space rather than having roommates and stuff. It'll be a bit weird, you know, with having mm-hmm. your parents mm-hmm. sure. So that's the reason behind that. And I live in the city. I gotta admit it's kind of pricey. <laughs> so, but there, um, there are definitely some strategies to, you know, to just save up in other uh, aspects, for instance, like food. Food takes up more than you think, like uh, more money than you think. So you can save by maybe, you know, making your own meals and going out in the weekends and stuff. So yeah, there are some st- strategies where you can save in other aspects. Um, I would say that, yeah, like what Jen said, living in the suburbs are is going to be cheaper than the city. And I agree with that. And um, when, before I came here, I had this thinking, uh, this mindset that, you know, living in the suburbs, it's going to be scary. It's going to be like, oh, no, I'm in the middle of nowhere and yeah. stuff, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not like that. It's totally not like that. I, maybe I'm going to move to the suburbs next year. Who knows? No one knows. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of different options, I think, yeah. depending on your, your budget and your needs, like if your family visits. Um, if you already have family here that's great and in terms of like cost of living um, so you've already given us a good strategy for yeah you know maybe saving in some areas what are you guys like um, how do you guys like manage your money and um, like how do you budget um, for your weeks Um, yeah do you find that it's somewhat affordable um, to live in Melbourne Seaman you're nodding Mm, I, I think like the reason why I chose to live in the city is because it's closer to campus. So you basically don't spend anything if you just walk to school. So like um, the place I stay is like 30 minutes away from campus and mm-hmm. it's convenient. It has like groceries and all the food restaurants around. So that was great. Um, in terms of cost of living, um, I tend to cook more um, compared to eating out, like maybe eating out on weekends, like what uh, Megan said. Because, uh, you know, you need to have fun as well. So if you cook uh, on your own, you basically spend around like $50, I guess, per week on those groceries if you were to really save up. And then, 
Yeah, and then um, and even though uh, in living in a city is is expensive, but there are student accommodations that fit around like starting from the starting of two hundred the minimum to around two hundred fifty to two hundred seventy. So like if you stay in those student accommodations, it's actually worthwhile. And also like you may even meet people from different countries because like student accommodation you see people from different uni. So the place I stay, I see people from Melbourne U, RMIT. And yeah, and also people from Monash. So that was some like different culture. So it's like very new for me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and let's talk about um, the accessibility um, infrastructure in Melbourne. So do you guys, um, does anyone have a car or do you just sort of take public transport? Um, how do you find our public transport system? Or do you just walk around? What, um, how do you guys sort of get around in Melbourne? Jen? I'd say we mainly use the public transport. Yes. Yeah, but when I go when I go grocery shopping, so like mm -hmm. the nearest grocery um, that I go to, usually it's uh, within walking distance. So I usually walk. Yeah. And it's also yeah. like you know because it, uh, now during lockdown we don't exercise much, so it's a way of me. It's the way for me to exercise and go out as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Megan? How do you get around? So I usually, most of my life in Melbourne, I spend in the city. So um, I usually just walk around. Um, there's a bus stop in front of my place, which I take to go to church, which is really convenient. And then the grocery store is really close to, it's walking distance, maybe like 10 minutes-ish. So yeah, and I, if, I go uh, uh, if I go on campus. I mean, like usually when I go on campus, I we all take the tram, yeah. ninety tram. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there's only one tram, but you know, at least there's a tram. <laughs> yeah, yeah take that. <laughs> and it comes every six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's supposed to. <laughs> um, yeah, we're really lucky in Melbourne. I think you know. Um, yeah, it's a very well connected city with trains, trams and buses. And yet myself, I live in the city and I don't have, have a car. I rely on public transport to do pretty much everything um, as well. Yep. But, All um, right, let's talk about, yeah, sorry, keep well, going. Add on that like students, yes. they get like a concession card. For, oh, yeah. You know, like that's cheaper. So if you want to buy like a yearly, like you know that you're going to be taking public transport a lot. So if you live far away, then you, there's a card where you can get cheaper if you're a student. For yep. you. So that would be great. Like, instead of just... Yeah. Great point. Yeah, I always forget about the real facts. <laughs> so that was great. Um, let's talk about the safety of Melbourne. Um, you know, do you guys um, feel safe living in this city? Um, yeah, has, you know, what, what do you sort of have to say about that? Um, definitely it's safe um, because, like even if it's not safe like you're always around for me I'm always around my friends because when we go mm -hmm. out we go out together so yeah. even if I walk home around 1am or 2am it's just quiet that's it but then there's nothing going on around you so you just calmly walk home as long as you don't doubt yourself you don't think you don't fear of anything then you should be going mm -hmm. home. yeah safely yeah Awesome. And I will just also say that I think Monash has a really great um, safety app that all our um, international students qualify for. So um, if you are ever in an emergency situation, um, you can use that service. Um, cool. Okay, so we're going to round off now, but I just want to um, sort of finish with the last couple of questions. So um, did you guys do anything to prepare um, to come to Melbourne? Like, was it saving money or making sure you had certain articles of clothing or packing certain foods that you thought you wouldn't get here? What did you do um, to prepare your move to Melbourne? I, I guess when... Oh, oh you want to go first? <laughs> okay. I guess when preparing, um, I mean, very different from my uh, home country, which is a tropical country, right? So we are mm -hmm. aware that Melbourne has four seasons, so definitely I pack at least a few clothes for each season, you know. Yep. In terms of food, I'm, I didn't bring much for food because I know I can just get anything here, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Seiman? Um, 
I think uh, same as what Jen said, um, bringing winter clothing is uh, important. Like I, I'm not sure, mm. but then like my friends, some of them, um, they focus on other things more. And they didn't, like, they didn't bring their winter clothing. So that's like a bit tough. Big and mistake. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we certainly have, you know, a, a real winter in, in Melbourne. It's not when, endless summer. <laughs> it's not winter, when it's summer, it's still like, like 17, 18. Yeah. So like, it's still cold <laughs> for yeah. people who always stay in tropical countries. And then um, maybe like bring like your herbal supplements like from home, like for tummy ache or like anything that you may not get here. And like maybe yeah. like herbal... Uh, herbs, you know, that you can like make your own soup, that kind of thing would be yeah. your own preference. Things that remind you of home, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, All right. What, like yeah. Add on. Yes. Imp- uh, for me, it was very helpful to print out your documents. So like you'll be oh, yeah. stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's certainly good to be really organized, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, a move to another country It takes a lot of preparation and organization. And the more you do that, the more that you'll be um, comfortable. So, yeah, it's a big move for some, you know, young people um, to make. But that really leads nicely to my next point, which is what do you, um, what advice do you have for anyone who's thinking about moving to study? I think like firstly, they have to be very clear about why they want to come. And then despite of any challenges that they face or any hardships or they feel homesick, they will still stick to that one clear goal that they have, the reason why they come. So for me, it's basically the opportunities in Melbourne, um, like the work opportunities, the, the culture, like, you know, the independence that you learn by living alone. So if you have a reason and then you find a reason to stick to it, I think that, that that would be something that you should have. Mm. Awesome. Megan? Yeah, I agree what Simon has said. Um, it's always a good thing to do your like survey and research first. If you can, you know, come to Melbourne first before you move here, see the environment and stuff. Um, I would say you you know, ninety-nine percent of people who came come here will like Melbourne. No, that's based on my own imagination, but <laughs> yeah, but it's a good city. Um, but do your research first, uh, like ask yourself, do you really want to be in this course? What do you want to be in the future and stuff? Um, is it according to your passion? And what else? One tip I would say is uh, in terms of packing, uh, the, the previous question, um, don't read too much of like taking to uh, bringing too many stuff here as in like uh, when I first came here I brought like uh, what do you call it pans and stuff and like cutleries <laughs> plates and, like, I mean you can get them here it's not yeah. uh, because I thought it was really expensive <laughs> and stuff here but hey it's like one two dollars in target don't worry yeah. don't pack, you know yeah. any stuff too it won't burn yourself and another thing I would say is in terms of like your English levels uh, Mm -hmm. because I used to worry that my English wasn't like good enough Um, I would say people here are very accepting like they understand that if you you're an international student you know um, they know that English is not your first language and they understand that and you don't you know don't really need to worry about you know not being good enough in English yeah yeah awesome and Jen Yes, um, I'd say one tip, um, don't doubt yourself too much because that's, that, I mean, especially you're going to move and if you're moving alone, you don't really have any support. The only thing you can depend is on yourself. So, yeah, you just that's have great to, advice. Yeah. Um, like, I know it's easier said than done, but you really have to depend on yourself to, you know, don't give up and be confident. You learn at you learn as you go. And mm-hmm. yeah, more steps goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's so true. Um, don't talk yourself out of it just yeah. because you uh I guess I get somewhat apprehensive about the challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it can still be the right decision for you if you are a little bit nervous about it. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, for joining me today. Um, really appreciate your time. Um, and yeah, to all of those um, of you out there who are thinking about making the move to Melbourne and studying with us, I hope this has been helpful and we hope to see you in Melbourne soon. See you.